What's up, YouTube, and welcome back to the Knicks Cave. I'm Jan and Nick Fan, your host, and let's get right into it. But before we get into it, I want you to do me one small favor. I want you to hit that like button. I definitely want you to subscribe, leave a comment. You want to know the next video going to drop, hit the notification bell. All right, let's get into this video. New York Knicks bench proving dollars wrong. Before we get into that, let's just talk about this game because I want to talk about three things that I came away. You can see three takeaways that I saw in this game that if the Knicks continue to do that, they're going to be all right this season. We're going to pass Boston. Uh, Philadelphia, in my opinion, they, I don't think Philly going to be a threat. Uh, MB's already in, already injured, if not injured. <laughs> y'all, if y'all been following NBA news, y'all already see where MB is at right now. They rested him for the rest of of, of preseason. And we got to keep in mind that this is a preseason. So, you know, a lot of people don't take much away from the preseason, but I, I put a little stock on preseason because uh, it's not like football, you know what I'm saying, preseason. They kind of vanilla. Teams come right out and they started coming out. They come right out, you know what I'm saying? Some guys try to get really ready and prepare for the open of the season and they use the preseason. But this, this game, I look at this game as a stepping stone towards the opener. Because Minnesota, you know what I'm saying, being one of them teams since the preseason started, scoring over, well, averaging over 100 and something points, 122 points to be exact per game, uh, fourth in the West. And put it like this, um, they was a real good team last year, offensively and defensively. So I wanted to gauge the New York Knicks on this team because, come on, Charlotte and Washington, that wasn't really a test. Although it was a test, you know what I'm saying? It wasn't supposed to be, but it was. All right. Now, the three things that I took away from this game, before I get to the bench, just bear with me. Um, We're going to need Brunson to always come out and get started hot. Not only Brunson, Carl Anthony Towns. I like the way Ananobi came out dropping 14 points in that first quarter, even though he only ended the game with 19 points. That means he kind of disappeared somewhere down the line. But, you know, they only played 25 minutes, so they didn't play the fourth quarter. We're going to get into that also. But uh, the, that first thing, if the, the, the starters could come out and get a quick start, don't be flat, come out and put up points, take an early lead, the New York Knicks should, in my opinion, humble opinion, I mean, at, win every game they play. <laughs> I ain't saying every game, but... If they come out and do the things, the starting unit come out and do what they're supposed to do, they had a pretty good chance of going over 60, 60 wins this year. That's just my opinion. Um, when you look at what the bench did, they didn't come out as often, like an offensive uh, powerhouse tonight. They only scored 74 points as a starter, as a team, as the starters all together, they, they grabbed 33 rebounds. They only dished out 13 assists. Brunson was uh, responsible for, I think, seven of them assists. I'll get to his stats exactly. Um, and field goal attempts, they took 50 field goals as the starting unit. They only made 23 free throws. They took 24, which is pretty good. They made 21 out of 24 free throws. That was the starting unit. No blocks, and they had five steals. But what concerns some of us is that there was no blocks, but there was rebounds and, you know, Defense, you know what I'm saying? The Knicks defense looked good. And that's the number two thing I took away from this game, the defensive prowess. The Knicks defense was outstanding tonight against Minnesota. They hold them just to just 110 points. When I just said they was averaging 122 points, that's 12 points below their average. So the defensive prowess was there. If they could continue that defensive prowess, they're going to win over 60 games. That's just my opinion. Um... They forced numerous turnovers and limited Minnesota scoring opportunities. Is the thing that I I think was really crucial to um them securing a win tonight. But if they can constantly and do this consistently throughout the season, the Knicks is going to be one of them teams. You know, they're going to be the team that I expect them to be with this roster. And I'm gonna be I'm gonna say something <laughs> might go over. Um, I don't know, but I still keep wondering if we had Julius and um. The Inferno, Dante Inferno on his team. I think, I don't know what Miles, with, excuse me, with Bridges. I don't you know what. Even without Bridges, this would add a newbie coming back. I think we still would be, I still think we would be a favorite to beat Boston. Even if we didn't make this trade, you know what I'm saying? That's just my opinion. 
Let me know, man. Let me know what y'all think. You know what I'm saying? I know, I, I, don't get me wrong, I like this trade, but I was watching, not only watching, just thinking about how Randall and Dante and Dante the Inferno affected this team. It was some hot moments last night between Dante, Jalen Brunson, and Dante and Brunson's father. That was one of the things about Dun, Dante, Dante, that I did not like. It seemed like there wasn't a game that he didn't go by that he wasn't beefing with somebody, that he was not beefing with somebody. But uh, this game last night, the New York Knicks, they started off slow, but then they ended the quarter on a little run. They took a 26 to 25 lead into the uh, second quarter. Then um, Minnesota came out and they went on a, like a little run, uh, taking a 10 point lead. The Knicks came back on a little run, but they ended that um, first half down by uh, two points. I think it was 57 to 55. Um, but what I took from this game is the bench. Um, the bench contribution. The Knicks bench players, they stepped up. when They seem to be stepping up every game since preseason. And I'm thinking that this will continue throughout the season. Uh, Shamit, um, I know he don't have a guaranteed contract right now. But I think after the way he's performing, you know, the way he's playing, that he's going to get signed to a guaranteed contract. And now he's going to get signed. He's going to be a part of that second unit. That's just because if you looked at the fourth quarter and who Chase went with, in the fourth quarter, he went with Jericho Sims, Precious Achua, Shamet, um, Payne, and um, um, Miles McBride. We didn't see my man Tyler, the creator, collect. So that let me believe that right now, with two games left, Tibbs already figured out his starting rotation, which y'all heard me advocate for Shamit to be in that rotation because Josh Hart didn't score a basket last night. Uh, he, I don't even think he attempted a shot. I know we need his hustle. But if he's not going to score or attempt shots, it's going to take away because what we are imagining right now with, with Towns is that it's going to be a stretch floor. It's going to be an open basket. And it's not going to be too much double teaming on the Knicks, on the Knicks starters. But if Josh Hart is not making baskets, they're going to start pressuring the other guys. And I know it's due to the shots, the limited shots that's now there. With, but, yeah. It's limited because <laughs> you only had um, Julius and Randall dominating the ball. Now, you, if you see Ananobi, he want to be a part of this offense, and he's making it known I'm the second highest paid player on this team, so I am going to be a part of this uh, offense. Then you got Mal. I, was, I keep saying Mal, but then you got Bridges. He's got to get his shots, you know what I'm saying? And Towns and, and, and Bronson, they're going to dominate the ball. So I know it's not going to be that many shots left for Hart, but when Hart get the opportunity, he got to take the shots and he got to make it. Even if he's not making the shots, he still got to take the shots because as long as he's taking the shots, he's going to keep the defenses honest. They're going to have to play defense. There can't be a double team on anybody. That's just my opinion. So with that being said, I still would like to see Shaman in that starting unit, but I love him in the in the second unit because that's what makes this second unit so dangerous. Shaman is a player that a lot of people underestimate. But there's another thing that I really want to talk about. Before I talk about it, let's just continue about how this bench, how the bench is going to really help this team grow. You know what I'm saying? Then you got Miles McBride. Um, he started off slow. You can expect that because he had a little illness. But as the season go on, he shot somewhere close to 41% from downtown. If I'm wrong, correct me in the comments. I always answer the comments. Um... And I only expect him to get better. You know what I'm saying? And then you got Shaman, and then you got Payne. Now, Payne is another guy. I think he shot somewhere around 39% for the last three years from downtown. He really improved his shooting. So I'm going to be real. I'm going to be honest. Before, you know, the Philadelphia series and him coming to the New York Knicks, I really wasn't following his career that much. And I thought he, you know, wasn't as good. He's a good player. So much that he reminded me of Jeff Teague. You know what I'm saying? Jeff Teague was one of them guys that people really slept on, but Jeff Teague was a really good basketball player, a three-point shooter, and a real good defensive player. And I see all them attributes in Cameron Payne, and I'm glad we made that signing. But there's a question that I want to ask you all. I'm getting off the, 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 the bench because I think the bench is going to really shock a lot of people in the NBA 
A lot of people keep talking about that. That's the our weakest link on this team. And I beg to differ. I really beg to differ. I think that this bench, if you looked at what they did, it actually this bench scored what? 41 points, 19 rebounds. They had nine assists, uh, field goal attempts. They had attempted 37 field goal attempts. They made 14 out of them attempts. They went to the free throw line 10 times and made eight threes, eight of the, excuse me, eight free throws. They had three blocks and three steals. Defensively, this this unit really get after it. So this bench, in my opinion, they're proving people wrong every time you take a step on the court. Even in the game two, when Tibbs kind of empty out the bench and let everybody play. You got to see what Cole can do, Dadier, uh, Hucker Pootie, and that's where I'm going to go right to next. I want y'all to answer this question right here. Do y'all think that Hoka Party should replace Jericho Sims? And I'm going to give you three reasons why I think he should, and then I'm going to give you three reasons why he's not ready, not just yet. But if you look at what he's been doing lately, it's, it can happen. It can happen. Well, at least in my opinion, let me know what y'all think. All right. Number one reason that if I was Tibbs or I would think about making that switch is the defensive powers. Hoker Porty is known for his def defensive skills, uh, which could provide a boost to the Knicks' defense when he's on the court, especially in that second unit when you got... This is why I would like to have Hart in that second unit, him to natural rebounds. He's a threat around... Well, he's a, a protector around the rim. He's not... He's not going to stand there. You know what I'm saying? He reacts, but when I mean when he reacts, it's not in a negative way. He seems to stay grounded. You know what I'm saying? He haven't collected too many blocks, but he have, you know, what's the word, altered a couple of shots so far. And he's been great on the boards. He didn't score last night, but he still came in right away. And he made contributions on the board. This is his spacing, just him being out there and the rebounds he did grab. I, I'm, I don't know if I'm going to get to the stats or not, but I think that this guy just might be able to place him. That's one reason. Number two is the athleticism. I am not saying he's more athletic than Jericho Sims because Jericho Sims is very athletic and Jericho Sims bulked up. But uh, as a young athletic player, has the potential to develop into a little bit more dynamic player than Jericho Sims. He's a little bit taller than Jericho Sims. He's around 6'11 and some change, almost a true seven-footer. And he just a little got him a little more bounce around the rim to me. You know what I'm saying? A little more awareness offensively than um, Jericho Sims. That's just my opinion, all right? Third is the potential for growth. You know what I'm saying? Uh, being a rookie, not really. He played you know, overseas for a few teams, but a rookie in the NBA, uh, he has room to grow and improve his game, which could make him a valuable in the long term, you know what I'm saying? Once we figure out what we're going to do with Mitchell Robinson and we can see what he's developing too. Because before that, I think he was playing for Indiana in college. And I think he uh, had an ACL injury. This guy was dynamic. It was, you know what I'm saying? This guy can get off the floor. He was a great rebounder and a blocker. So the guy got skills, you know what I'm saying? We still calling him a rookie, you know what I'm saying? But he got skills. Now, some would say, and I'm going to give you three reasons what some would say why he should not. That inexperience, you know what I'm saying? He is a player coming from overseas. And this is things that a lot of things that people overlook on overseas players, and, and I don't know why, but I think they play just as hard and just as good as the NBA. Um, they just didn't make it here, you know what I'm saying? They had players just a little bit better. But I think the experience and been over there for a couple of years gave him enough experience. But some would say he's not experienced enough. So that would be the number one reason why he should not be replacing Jericho Sims because he might, might need another year or two in the NBA. Then there's his offensive skill set. As I said, he's a little raw. And if you compare him to Jericho Sims, I'm going to be real, he's he's more offensively minded and gifted than Jericho Sims. And that's just my opinion. I know we've seen Jericho Sims make some high-flying dunks, but that's all we've seen. This guy, he at least trying to take the seven foot, I'm mean, excuse me, the mid-range. It's a seven foot of jump shot. He moves, he really mobile around the rim, and he seems to get in the right position that wanted guys to get him that alley-oop. And he seems to know when to pick off that roll, you know what I'm saying, or roll off that pick. Excuse me. That's just my opinion. Uh, the last thing, what someone would say, is that he's not consistent enough. And then that's where I will agree with you at. 
his consistency is a problem. But so is Jericho Sims. You know what I'm saying? So there, in my opinion, there isn't really any reason why he shouldn't replace Jericho Sims on the second unit. But some would say that we gave Jericho Sims this money. He's been on the team for a while. And it's time for him to live up to our expectations. But I'm going to be real. My expectation for Jericho Sims is not that high. I think he's always going to be a, not a role player, but a third string and center. And I think Hooker Porty can come in and take his place on the second unit. And, and I just imagine whenever he get a chance to play with Colette in a professional, I'm not going to say professional, but in a regular season game, that they are going to make a difference. They are going to sc- Them two guys will show you alone that Leon Rose made the right pick when he picked them. But at the same time, I think this kid can step in right now and replace Jericho Sims. Tell me what y'all think. You know what I'm saying? If y'all still around, don't forget to hit the like button. Don't forget to comment. Hit the notification bell. And with that being said, I want everybody to stay safe, stay healthy, God bless, and peace.